welcome to another episode of Poorly Explained. Now in this video, I wanna talk about Log4j. That's a security vulnerability that's been found in uh, Java-based applications. And today I wanna to explain what the problems were with Log4j. Now, this video isn't for technical people. I'm not a Java programmer. I don't understand it fully. I'm just going to simplify it to the way I understand that may help you as a, again, non-programmer, non-technical person to get a bit of a grasp what the problem is and maybe be a little bit more caught up with today's news and, you know, sound more intelligent during a conversation in the bar. Let's start. So what is Log4j? Well, it is something called logging framework. It is a place or a tool to save logs of things that are happening in your application. You can log events like different things application is doing or errors. Now, since we're in legal tech here, um, and if you've ever used relativity, you can go to errors tab and you see all the errors that are saved there. That's what the login framework does. It saves different events and errors, problems, whatever programmers want to write in order to uh, troubleshoot problems later or just know what the application is doing. All right, so what's the problem with this framework? Let's talk about number of them. And first, where we want to start is whenever you log in something, generally an application developer writes something into a log. Now, this is Java environment. Uh, we're on web. So what we're writing into our logs doesn't necessarily come from the developer, whatever they want to write. They, one of the things they keep track of is different requests that are coming into the web server. So let's say uh, somebody sends a text string, like a request for something from your web server. Well, your login framework can log that information. And the first problem with creates is someone else is able to write into your logs. So that's not necessarily a big deal, but it could open up a situation where someone else writes into your logs and kind of overwhelms your system, sort of uh, denial of service kind of thing. Um, but the next problem comes in is with string interpolation. And the login framework has an ability to put some string in like curly braces. Uh, if you ever run productions in relativity or whatever, you know how you can customize uh, your placeholders. You can put file name in curly uh, braces, or you could put a uh, production number in curly braces, and when placeholder is generated, that string will get flipped to the actual value. Well, the login framework allows you to do the same thing. Uh, so it can substitute one string for another. But the issue is we have people from outside writing data into your log, in, and that log flips a, you know, a string to the actual value. So it kind of opens up some window for potential problems. But there is more to this string interpolation, and the, it's the fact that it's recursive. So it'll take those curly braces, it'll replace it with the value, and then it's gonna look for curly braces again. And if it finds it, it'll do it again and again and again, infinite number of times. So if the value that it replaces with contains curly braces in it, it's going to basically get stuck in the loop and create bigger and bigger, bigger string and potentially cause a crash or some other problem. And if that wasn't enough, string interpolation has some really cool features that are super dangerous too, where instead of substituting a string, you can have the login framework go to the other web server, request piece of data, bring it in, and put it into your log. Now this is really starting to get sketchy. And finally, the biggest flaw here is login framework can use string interpolation, go to another server, download piece of Java code, bring it to your server, and then run it. Now, this is like the craziest thing ever, and this is what probably makes people freak out the most. Now, all these different features I mentioned, uh, some of them do have ability to turn them on and off, and I can understand how they all came about. Uh, this is a programmer who created this framework and people were asking like, hey, can you do this? And he's like, oh, sure, we can add that. Oh, can you add this feature? Oh, absolutely, we can. And this login framework would have been absolutely fine if it was used maybe like on an internal network or by, you know, good people. But once you start opening up all these features and sharing it with the world, with all the evil people who are trying to exploit your system and cause problems, 
this is where you have uh, different issues. It's a situation of a, a feature creep where people are just asking for more, 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 and the programmer's like, sure, sure, let's do it. And they're not really thinking about what kind of problems could be could come out of all those features if they're implemented not properly or if they're not secured properly and so on. So hopefully this gives you some idea of what this log4j problem is and why some companies take long time to evaluate um, what users are asking and taking the time to figure out to make sure what they built into application isn't going to break other things or cause security vulnerabilities. Anyway, questions, comments, put them down in the bottom, but I probably will not be able to answer them because like I said, I am not an expert on this. I'm just trying to simplify it for most people to understand. Don't forget to follow on LinkedIn, subscribe on YouTube, and I'll see you guys in the next video.